Hi, I'm Amol Borker, Senior Product Marketing Manager for Vision and AI DSPs at Cadence 10 Silica. Today I'm here to talk to you about SLAM and the benefits of SLAM on a DSP. So let's start first with the introduction. So what exactly is SLAM? So SLAM stands for Simultaneous Localization and Mapping. It consists of two stages. One is to generate or to create a map of an unknown environment. Two is to understand the orientation and the position of a device within that environment. To illustrate, I have this camera over here. So with SLAM, the first step I would do is generate a map of the environment around this camera. And the second point would be to understand how this camera is moving within that space. A common term that you will hear that is used along with SLAM is six DAW for six degrees of freedom. All that means is that they are tracking three degrees of freedom on your position, so your X, Y, Z, and three degrees of freedom on your orientation. That is your yaw, pitch, and roll. Now you might ask, why is SLAM important? Well, SLAM gives you very articulated information about your device's position and orientation in a space. Previous modalities like GPS and range finding could not give you this level of accuracy. Also, today's applications, cutting edge applications, are very demanding, asking for this level of accuracy to provide more immersive and realistic experiences. This is where SLAM really comes in. Now that I've given you an overview of SLAM, let's talk about the common applications of SLAM. Now, there are a number of applications that are possible with SLAM, particularly the ones that benefit the most are the ones which really rely on understanding camera movement. Let's take a look at a couple of examples, one being indoor mapping. Let's say you go to a mall or uh, you're going to an office building and you're trying to find your conference room. Well, you can't really use GPS over here because there is no access to satellite data. So SLAM would actually be very useful over here. With SLAM, uh, you, your device would be able to know where you are in that building, and with some clever route planning, you'd be able to figure out how to get from your current location to your destination. Vacuum cleaners are another example. These little devices will first go around in your house and map the livable space or accessible spaces in their area. When it's time to clean, they will navigate within that map, and uh, that way they don't basically clean the same area twice because they are very limited on battery life. Another example is aerial drones. These drones use SLAM to get a better understanding of the world around them to more accurately generate 3D maps as well as for surveying processes. Now that I've talked to you about the applications, let's briefly go through the building blocks that are required to make SLAM come about. Now here is a generalized flow. There are very many different variations, but I'm showing uh, a common flow that covers the main points of SLAM. So we start first with the sensors. These can be RGB, depth, stereo, time of flight, variety of different sensors that can be used to capture data about the environment. This is fed into a feature matching or a key point extraction block. The idea of this block is for the sensor to provide information about where there are different interesting points in the scene. So for example, edges and lines and corners that can be found in one frame and then to correspond them to the same points in frame number two. Understanding how the frame point, how the points have moved from frame one to frame two allows you to get a pose estimation, which basically gives you your camera pose orientation and position. Following camera pose estimation, you have loop closure. So loop closure is, the is solving the problem of determining or understanding that you have previously visited that spot. So if I was standing right over here and I was uh, supposed to walk around the room and come back to my starting point, loop closure would tell me that I've already visited over here before. And then bundle adjustment is finally a stage for refinement. Once you have, this, have closed this loop and you have this trajectory, bundle adjustment will go in and make some fine refinements to the trajectory so that you have a more accurate positioning of your camera. Now typically, loop closure and bundle adjustment feed back into the pose estimation stage. So that way your camera pose is getting refined frequently and iteratively. So today I've given you an overview of SLAM, given you an introduction, uh, talked about the high-level building blocks. Next week, I'll go over the implementation details, talk a little bit more about our DSP and the general availability. Thank you for watching Whiteboard Wednesday, and check back next week. Thank you.